What's going on everybody? Today's going to be a quick little video on how to measure wing angle on both single element and dual element wings. Alright, so we're headed back to the basics on this one to cover measuring wing angle. It's something that I see people, uh, you know, kind of ask me relatively often. Um, we're going to go over kind of like a whiteboard demonstration of the technical way, the way to do it in the real world on my own car, we'll do that in a minute, and kind of why wing angle does not matter, and you'll see why at the end. So these are actually tracings of our Fulcrum 14 and our Apex 15 wings. So the two tools you're going to need to do this is some sort of angle finder and some sort of flat straight edge. It could be a 2x4, I just have a little piece of aluminum, a ruler, a paint stick, anything that's kind of flat will, will get the job done. So we're going to start with the technical way. If you're at the level where you're doing stuff in like CFD or some sort of engineering level stuff, the technical way is technically through the point of the trailing edge and the point of the leading edge. So it would almost be an angle such as this, give or take a little bit. That would technically be the wing's proper angle from an engineering perspective. What pretty much everybody does at the track, in order to get this angle, you would need to take the end plate off of the wing. It's kind of time consuming, a little bit of a pain. So what most people refer to as wing angle when they're at the track, you know, working on their own car, would be an angle similar to this. So when you're at the track measuring wing angle, all you need to do is just lay this across your wing, put your angle finder on it, and you know, you kind of know what your wing angle is. Now, dual element wings, it gets a little bit trickier. The way ours is set up, and most dual element wings that I'm aware of, the main lower element needs to be level, and they get measured the same way. Oh, I kind of missed that one a little bit, so we do that. It's kind of supposed to be, I guess we'll call it that, looks pretty good, you know. Um, the main element is supposed to be level, you know, zero degrees, and then all of the adjustment is done in the upper flap. Now when I was at the wind tunnel with the Time Speed BMW, they have our Apex 12, which has a little bit of a smaller upper flap, trying to gain some balance. We did actually adjust the whole wing, which would be the main element and the upper element, in one shot, and got a big difference that way, so they'll all make differences. It's just kind of up to you to find the balance that works. So the same thing with the dual element, which again we'll go over a real world example in a minute. You want to set the main element roughly zero, and then all the measurements will be done on the upper element with your angle finder trying to find out what the main element is. Now earlier in the video, I mentioned why wing angle doesn't really matter because what you're trying to achieve with a wing is to balance the arrow loading on the front. So if, let's take our Fulcrum 14 for example, if you get balance at 2 degrees, you know, great, you know. If you get balance at 6 degrees, alright, good enough, you know, as long as you measure it, the same every time, which in most cases will be just laying a straight edge on the top of the wing. And then one quick note would be if you have a, let's say, a gurney flap on the back of your wing right here, you do not include the height of the gurney flap. So whatever straight edge you have, you would lay kind of in the notch. Oops, I'm hitting the thing on the wall over there. You would lay it in the notch of the gurney flap. You wouldn't put it up on the gurney flap. So that's about it for kind of, you know, technical way, real world way. We're going to do a quick little uh, example on my own car. 
All right, so here we are with our Apex 8 mounted on my car. To find wing angle, like mentioned on the whiteboard, technically you would almost be something like this, but you would have to pull the end plate off every time. So imagine the end plate is on. You wanna just put your straight edge across it, get your angle finder. Also, a cell phone works well. Uh, just about every cell phone now has like a level built into it. So, and you wanna just adjust it until you get to zero. Which in our case, we'll call it right there just for time constraints on the video. So there you go. Main element is set at zero. And again, if a gurney flap is on it, you would not measure the height of the gurney flap. So that's how you measure a single element wing angle. Now, let's say the rear of your car was still a little bit loose in high speed turns. You would just keep going, add a little bit more angle. Let's see. I don't know if, it's, if that's going to be shown up on camera, but I don't know, we're about 5, 6 degrees now, whatever. So that's how easy it is to adjust single element wing angle. Alright, so here is our Apex 15 dual element setup. And again, if you need to measure just the main element, that's why something like a, a flat piece of uh, metal or a roller or uh, like a paint stick you can do that without having to remove the upper element. And this is just tossed up here, but we should be right around zero. We're good there. And then to measure the top is the same. You know, whatever it may be. This is just kind of loosely up there, but you'll get the idea. And we're almost at like 30. And that's kind of one of the benefits of a, a dual element wing over a single. We'll hop back over to the white boy in a second to explain that but you know again that's just kind of how you set up and measure wing angles alright so I know I just uh, kind of teased you with the benefit of a dual element wing so what we're gonna do is do that real quick so the air comes in this way obviously most people know the basics of a wing it'll speed up under the bottom giving you a low pressure zone across the bottom you know they all work the same you get fast moving air here and then you kind of get air slowing down on the top so you get high pressure on the top right what happens when air travels longer across the surface is it sorts it sorts to slow down creating less of that uh, dynamic pressure drop across the surface but what happens in the case of a dual element wing this little slot gap right here as the high pressure air kind of builds up and gets squeezed through the slot gap between the two, it speeds up. And when that air speeds up, you end up getting another low pressure zone on the bottom here, which would be missing on a single element wing. So a whole video could be dedicated to dual element wings and stuff like that, but that just kind of gives you a quick, uh, you know, basics of dual element wings versus singles. Alright, so that's about it for this one. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, click that subscribe button uh, to stay up to date with any other, you know, aero videos we're going to be doing. So, as always guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.